Hi, hi, this is Joey Reynolds. I'm uh, sitting on my porch, and I'm wishing I was sitting in a Porsche, the car. <laughs> but uh, the bird is gone. You know, I had my bird, so we have a wise stuffed owl. I don't know what, I miss having that bird around. I used to have the bird on my shoulder and I was singing zippity doo dah every day. You know, it's a blue bird on my shoulder. It's the truth, it's what's actual, everything is satisfactual. Don't, don't you wish you had one of those days? It's Uncle Remus from Song of the South. And uh, everything was, was pretty, pretty good until uh, somebody came along and started to shake his world up because he was kind. You know, when you're, when you're good to someone, you gotta pay the price because kindness is not well received from someone who didn't ask for it. That's what I'm getting to learn. You know, I, I try to do things for people when they haven't asked for it. Uh, that's me volunteering to please myself. Uh, this is a lot of therapy here, you know, but we've had a whole year of being introspective, I think, with our pandemic for all of us on this planet. That's why we want to leave here, and we're going to go to another planet. Now, Sir Richard Branson was on television this morning showing his spaceship, which is the Virgin flight, and it's uh, $250,000 per person for next year when they uh, lose gravity. I think they already lost a little bit in their heads, but it's a fantasy, you know, I mean, people want to, we, we like space and we like outer space. We like to have uh, imagination is, is, is rules with everything, including our motion pictures, our television. Uh, you know, we have uh, fights on the air with people on TV in their television shows where they actually get murdered and then they come back in the next series you know it's it's all a fantasy now so the fantasy flight is a real going to be a real flight for because you're going to pay 250,000 I don't think you're going to give them a check and that and then it bounces because you, you're not here anymore uh, so the, the thing is that you're going to be going into outer space and you're going to experience what space people have experienced which is nothingness and if I want to experience nothingness, I'll just stay here. <laughs> this is the most nothing time in my life when I, I who have nothing. <laughs> uh, I love that other song. The other song that really comes to mind with all of this stuff, uh, now that I'm mentioning song titles, is from My Fair Lady with uh, Rex Harrison, the movie. It was also a Broadway show. But he sings, why can't a woman be like a man? And women aspiring to be like men. I don't know why. We're not in such a good place anyway. What do you want to be like us for? Uh, I don't think Eve was trying to be like Adam. I think Eve was had a, a different calling. And I, I think somewhere along the line, we want to, women want to be where men are. And I don't know why. I don't know. What the hell are you thinking? <laughs> Pretty soon you're going to be mad at God for not making you first. This is not. This is not. This is not a contest. It's just simply. Uh, uh, there's difference. Men are different than women. <laughs> Did you know that? I don't know if anybody ever wants to come to that to that place. I mean, a woman doesn't have to be a hockey player. She doesn't have to be. A, a, you don't have to be anything that guys are famous for in what they call a man's world. You know. Thank you, James Brown. It is a man's world in in that we were built to carry a heavier load and women were built to put up with us and we're getting away from that you know where women are wanting to be more like men in the practical application i know i think women when they do the same job should be paid the same i mean that's without a doubt and i think women should be promoted for their work and their efforts and if you want to be a, a some sort of a, a masculine figure in your life uh you you probably are are going down a road that you should examine a little more because men are different than women we are we're, we're just different we're built differently we have different purpose so well, wouldn't it be a, a lot more sane to to figure out what our purpose is what's my purpose as a man I do that I think of that all the time what am I supposed to do as a man they call me a gentle man that means I open doors and uh, and I, I consider women and I, I, I know that they are, they used to be called the weaker sex, they hate that now. And, and you know, women lawyers are, are pushing things too, like that Gloria Allright, she can't, she can't get enough cases in her brief. You know, I mean, this is a woman who's, she's really not that, 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 that much of a, 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 she's not that beautiful. You know, and women like men, men like beautiful women. And we, and men, you know, we want, we want to see uh, bubble butts and, uh, and big titties. We like that. You want to change that? Why? <laughs> what was? What's wrong with that? <laughs> and and what's wrong with featuring that? I mean, as if uh, as if you don't have that one. Well, why did you go wear a, a burqa? 
Uh, I mean, women putting a mask on their face, we all have better wear masks now, but for a lot of different reasons. I mean, see, we, we got this all screwed up. We really do. And there's a perspective that I'm bringing up now that you might want to examine. Now, I think you can be anything that you graduate to be from wherever you have gone and whatever you've learned. And I think that's a choice. But if you're going to pick a football player, you want to be a female football player, I mean, why? For what? So that you could be like a guy? So that you could be a quarterback? What? Why does a woman want to be a quarterback in football? Just ask yourself that. What is it, what's inside of you that says, you know, I want to be just like Tom. I'm going to be like Brady when I grow up. Yeah. Now, there's a nice role model for someone to think, well, men are presidents, so now I want to be a president. So now we have uh, uh, Ms. Harris, who is now a vice president and perhaps will be president. Maybe we'll have another person, another woman, another woman one day. We are, we are assimilating in professions based on ability and talent, not on desire to be like. That's the difference. Because as I learned it in school when I was a kid, like seeks like. And here's the way the nuns used to say it. Birds of a feather flock together. That means that you want to be like the other person. Then when I got to be a little older, I was, I was Joseph in school and birds of a feather flock together. Then when I went into high school, it was uh, like seeks like. You know, so people hang out together because they're like the other person. You'd find a gang of people who go to the soda shop afterwards, is what we did in those days. And you would smoke a pell-mell cigarette, which is also what we did in those days. And you would share it with somebody like you, like seeks like. And then when we went to the college, they taught us quite the opposite. It says, opposites attract. So I thought, whoa, <laughs> wait a minute. I thought birds of a feather, I thought like seeks like, and now I'm finding out that opposites attract? I, where did that come from? And in reality, after all of that and during all of my drunken and drug trips and my therapy and everything that I've gone through so far in my life, I've learned the principle. Sick pick sick. It's a Reynolds wrap.